Thank you. I would like to share with you some of my reflections regarding how it is to teach uh, in engineering programs. I myself, I as, I'm actually from Switzerland. I studied at the ETH in Zurich and did my PhD there. And then I had an own company and was employed as consultant for 10 years. Then I moved to Sweden. Uh, where I, after some years as a consultant in different companies there, came back to the university, uh, first in the automation program and now in computer science. I saw this gap also between engineering education and engineering role, what, that what CDIO is all about. But I haven't, we are not in CDIO yet. I saw that the world has changed, but the teaching culture is still the same. And I began to interest, to, to interest myself for the research in higher education. Uh, actually, I did quite, quite the travel from being interested in only the content when I was teaching, sort of the what to teach, over to being interested, becoming interested in how to teach. And now that I read more and more about higher education research, I'm more and more interested in how to support student learning, which is quite a, a, a circle. And doing this, I found that uh, when I tried to implement some of the interesting things from, from research, I got resistance from all over. The students didn't like it. I got not good evaluations because it polarized the students into the, the group that thought this was the best course ever and into a group, this is the worst teacher we ever had. The administration didn't like it because there was no way to, to combine uh, lectures and labs in a way. The colleagues didn't like it because I was challenging their view on, on teaching. So I, I sat down and I started reflecting and my aim with my paper is actually to produce something that one can give to the colleagues that are not yet interested in, in research and higher education to scientifically somehow prove that the way we are doing things in the classical teaching way is, is not as good. That there is an, uh, an explanation regarding the problems there are. And, and I mean, of, of course, you who are here, you are interested in teaching. So, I mean, this is not a critique towards you. This is more of a something that you might want to take home and share with your colleagues that are not uh, uh, interested in CDIO yet. So in my content I'm going to talk about the classical teaching culture just very shortly what I mean with that. I'm going to talk about some research in higher education. I'm going to show some, some way that I use to, to illustrate the, the problems and I'm going to talk about some critical problems that I found and how to improve something. Well, the classical teaching culture, and this is sort of the Swedish outlook, but I know it's, at, at least in Europe, it's quite common that we divide up our lectures into a theoretic uh, part, which are the lecture part, and into a more practical deliberation part. The theory part is usually taught by professors or associate professors, and deliberations are run in parallel sessions by teaching assistants or by, um, by senior or, or, or junior lecturers. We usually have grades for the theor theoretical part, uh, I mean uh, uh, assessment grades, and we all have passed and failed for the practical part. Another uh, typical characteristic for the classical teaching culture is that there is an objectivistic view on knowledge. Knowledge is seen as something objective that can be transformed from the teacher or the professor over to the student. So we sort of pour knowledge into the student. Uh, that has some consequences like the cover the ground uh, dilemma that one should sort of go through everything in the book. And also it means that we, uh, in the final test, we have a final test, we pour knowledge during, uh, during the courses and at the end we, we sort of make a test to see how much of this objectivity, objective knowledge has actually arrived into the student. Uh, these are the final tests. 
problems that are well known that uh, um, are associated with the traditional classical teaching style that are documented in the literature is that uh, newly examined engineers lack engineering profess professionalism. They lack communication skills, foreign language skills, teamwork experiences, problem solving skills. You all know that. That's a sort of what CDIO is all about. Uh, we also know that some of the problems is that focus is on the teacher and not on student learning. Students lose their intellectual curiosity. I mean, it's really uh, dramatic uh, uh, or, or uh, sort of uh, catastrophic if students have less intellectual curiosity at the end of the studies than when they started studying. Then we really do something wrong. No. And also, students lose their interest and quit. These are the problems that are well known. Uh, they are well known because they have been studied as well. Research on higher education has studied some of these problems and uh, actually with two books on higher education one gets very, very far. So I, I think all the, the engineering departments they should give their em employers two books, one on Paul Romsden on teaching on higher education and one on constructive alignment by John Bix as a, as a Christmas gift or something. Because <laughs> with these two books you come quite far. We have heard a lot about the constructive alignment that's from 2007. That, um, it's based on uh, the constructivist understanding of learning, meaning that learning is done by the students, not by the teacher. Students have to learn and they incorporate whatever knowledge comes to them on the basis that they already have. Just of like Lego uh, bits flying into the room and they fetching some of the bits and putting it onto their basement. And it's a combination of this constructivist and the outcome based teaching education. We want to assess these learning objectives. We want to make sure that the students learn what we want them to learn here. And we use the course activities to, to help students learn that. But in the middle is the student learning, which is often forgotten when one draws this constructive alignment. Start putting student learning into the middle there, because that's what it is. About 15 years before we have John Bix and constructive alignment, we have Paul Ramsden. What he did was that uh, he looked at how teachers teach. And um, he came up with two different things. One is the generic teaching theory, where he says there are basically three different roles that you can see yourself as a teacher. Either you are the one transforming the knowledge from yourself to the student, that's the theory one that he calls, or you're focusing on student projects. That's more or less what we do in CDIO, right? We, we, we're more project oriented. Or what he, he refers to the sort of the ideal would be, and it means that you're not always reaching the ideal, would be that there is a relationship between teaching and learning. And it, the teacher's role is to support student learning. Now we have to be very clear that there, is, there are no checklists or silver bullets for good teaching. Okay? The, I, no one can, can come up with a list like that, but we probably all agree that there are examples of very good or excellent teaching and there are examples of the contrary as well, right? And this is exactly what Ramsden did in the, in the beginning of the 90s. He, he just looked at all the excellent, good, effective teaching examples and he did a, a large study and he came up with six principles that more or less are incorporated in good teaching. Now this doesn't mean that, that if you follow this that you will automatically uh, reach good teaching. But it means that if, if you follow these you will improve the quality of your teaching. Now what I did is I, I looked at these six principles and I uh, just shortly, interest and explanation, this is about you should make the subjects interesting and you should explain complex matters in an easy way. Principle two, concern and respect for students and student learning is that um, 
uh, I have to just make sure that I say the right thing here, is uh, you should be generous and willing to share your knowledge and pass it on to the students. Uh, not, my, my, not making things harder than they are, not frightening or threatening your students. And m so that students think it's a pleasure to learn and are willing to really work hard for learning. Principle three is about the appropriate assessment and feedback. The, the, most, the, the most relevant uh, factor for the quality of teaching is the quality of feedback. This is something that uh, traditional culture has a hard time. Uh, so the teacher should be accessible for the students and the teacher should try to buy in, in a deep uh, knowledge scenario trying to to find out what the students really have understood. Principle four, clear goals and intellectual challenge is um, that the control over learning should be shared between the student and the teacher. That, uh, this, that the teacher should not just uh, cover the book, but it should try to explain to the students what are the important things here to reach understanding. Independence control engagement is about that their students are individual people and they learn in an individual way. So one should have tasks that, that are, uh, the relevant tasks should be on the right level that one asks. Independence, control and engagement, that was, yeah. And the learning from students is, according to Ramson, the most important one that, that we make sure. We have, as a teacher, no guarantee that the effects, how the effects of our teaching are on the students. We have all ways to ask the student, are there misunderstandings, misconceptions? So that's very important. Now, if one... I'm not doing the analysis here, it's in my paper, but if we look at the traditional style of teaching in engineering, and we ask ourselves, well, how well are we doing here? And we put, for each of these principles, we can have sort of a polarity uh, X here. C1 is interest and explanation, concern, appropriate, clear, independence control. We find that the in the traditional uh, teaching in engineering, Interest and explanation is pretty high because that's what our, our teachers really burn for, their subject. They really put a lot of energy into teaching the subject, making it interesting. So that, that we can have sort of a very strong mark here somewhere. And the other one is that they, they're trying to, to understand if, the, if uh, or they're trying to, to um, uh, answer questions from the students. So this is also pretty high. So but the others are either totally counteracted or not present at all. And that has to do with the division between lectures and, and, uh, and practical part. This has to do with an arrogant style, professors hating to teach. I mean, I'm sure we all have colleagues like that. Just running in and out the auditorium, hating contacts uh, with the students. Uh, so this is the mapping here. It's kind of the framework for good teaching in the traditional, uh, in the traditional culture of teaching and engineering. And that's exactly also how I felt when I started to, to go outside of this framework. I really felt outside. This is why we have sort of this, uh, this situation when we're trying to teach. The interesting is, uh, part is when we look at the CDIO style. Well, CDIO the idea is to re-emphasize the, the engineering in engineering, meaning putting together the theory and the practical part and, and training that together. Uh, having a holistic view, getting skills into there that a modern engineer needs to have nowadays. And we can do a sort of a mapping between the standards and between these six principles of Ramston. And we see that if we look at all the standards, all of the principles somehow are somewhere in there. So we get a, a totally uh, larger framework here for good teaching, which is good news. This means, it doesn't mean that a CDIO program by automatic is a lot better than, than, uh, than a traditional program. What it means is that a teacher who wants to teach according to the, to the research and pedagogy in the CDIO program can do that within the framework. 
it's not like not like here. If you do it, or if you do it in a classical engineering, you, you want to, to to sort of do this appropriate assessment and feedback here, concern for the students here. You are outside of this blue framework. I, excuse me, but in in the CDIO, you're still inside here. But the bad news is, if CDIO is being run at the department or at the university that is, is, um, uh, is run according to the traditional engineering style, where the blue is the normal state, then that means that there will always be forces pulling back the CDIO program into the blue area, right? which means that you have to put a lot of energy all the time, all the time, into running uh, a CDIO program, which probably some of you who have been running CDIO feel from your heart. So the thing is, the question is, how can we change? How can we make change to blue so that it get, gets a little bigger? And uh, the, the, if one looks at the underlying problems, I found sort of three critical problem areas. As I already explained, the view on teaching, we have a problem, epistemological problem between that in engineering sciences, we have the, the epistemology of realism, where you have objective knowledge, you have experiments that you run, you, you have a total different view on knowledge than in, in teaching. With a, with a more uh, constructive uh, alignment. So we have this hard science versus soft science, and we have teachers saying, we are not teachers, we are engineers, we are researchers. That's actually what they're saying. We have a style of examination. If we only run final exams, then we prevent students from deep learning and understanding. That's a fact, that, that is uh, covered in the literature. Students learn what they're being examined on. That's as easy as it is. And then we have, of course, the hierarchy between research and teaching. The publish or perish syndrome. Research has so much more status at our working places, so that there is no way that they uh, can meet. Some Possible improvements to that, I have them in my paper, I'm not uh, going to go into more detail here, but the constructive alignment path is a, very, uh, has a, is a good way to go, I think. And in Europe, we have also the Bologna process in Europe, the CDIO initiative. Uh, that's for the outlook on the knowledge part. The style of examination, there are a lot of interesting things. Mm. To sum up, what I did, I tried to look at the classical teaching culture in engineering, which generates a lot of problems, like the gap, surface learning, uh, the client interest, one is trying to even get in women to compensate for that. Uh, one has the, the, the constructive alignment and CDIO, but instead of just solving problems that are generated from this classical teaching culture, I tried to analyze what are the underlying key factors that reconstruct that classical teaching culture all the time. And I found some these three problem areas that I tried to give some alternatives for improvement. Mm. Thank you for your attention.